guys, welcome back. We're going to do a continuation of a build that we started a year ago, believe it or not. We found some of the footage for it, and what wasn't corrupted, we're going to go ahead and try to limp through with uh, voiceover type stuff and uh, picture slideshow, because I have thousands of pictures of all my builds. Here in the future, we're going to be uploading another full build, so don't worry, we have another one coming. We're going to start this video with a recap from the last video, which is uh, the floors. If you haven't seen that video, click the link and follow it to that. We're going to start this video with a few uh, pictures of where we left off in the last video. It's going to have a picture of the floor with the insulation installed and then with uh, the plywood on top of the insulation. Here's a ledge that we made on the trailer to um, rest the walls on. You'll see here pictures of pocket holes that I use sometimes to uh, help hold the wall on or actually secure the wall to the camper. I also screwed through the outside into the floor structure. So I'm not going to waste any more of your time. We're going to get over to the other video, which is recorded with my old equipment. So we're going to try to modify it and do what we can do to make it as good as we can for you. Let's get over to the old J from a year ago and get back on that build. Here we go. Hey, welcome back. This is DIY Teardrop J here coming back to you with uh, a new build. The first video was on the floor. This one's going to be on the walls and the spars. This is going to be a 4x8 ben, ben Roy, Benoit, whatever you want to call it. With a galley. It's just going to be a, a shell, a completed shell. And the buyer's going to uh, finish it on their own. Alright, well, without further ado, here we go. So to get this shape, first thing you're going to do, or the first thing I do, as I take my tape measure, this is going to be the bottom edge here. That's the top edge. We already know there's going to be a radius right here. Um, I put a 24 inch radius on it, so I'm going to take from here to here. Let me move this out of the way. And I'm going to mark 24. Then I'm going to take from the top down and mark 24. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the square and I'm going to mark a line. What you're looking for is a, just a cross so you know where to put your, well, my jig, the one that I have. I made a jig for this, or somewhat of a jig. It just makes my life a little easier. And I'll explain to you what I did here in just a second. So now we've got both marked at 24. Now that we have it marked at 24, I'm going to grab my drill, and this is what I've made. Okay, for my style of camper, Ben Benoit style, or Ben Roy, um, it's a 24 inch radius in the front, and an offset 36 inch radius in the back. The way I do that is I put me a little screw right here, okay? This little X that we marked is where that point is going to sit. And then from the center of that screw, I measure out 24 inches and drill the hole just big enough for a pencil. Okay? I also have on this 36 inches. Okay, so that's going to be for the back radius. Again, just drilled out enough for a pencil. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to take, push firmly, back that screw down slowly so it doesn't move. Now, you don't want this tight, you just want it tacked. Okay, so then I go ahead and just get a couple threads in there. What that allows it to do is spin. You get an idea of what I'm going to do next. All right, now we can take this up all the way up to here. Here's my pencil. What I did was I sharpened that real good and sharp. So uh, it'll fit in that hole and make a nice mark. So now I'm going to take it to the very top or you can start down there at the side, it doesn't really matter. I'm just going to hold firmly, push so you get a nice dark line. Now I'm going to go ahead and go over this again because I like the line as dark as possible.
Let me get you a little close-up view of this as well, so you can see it. I'm just dropping this in at the 24 inch mark and you just move it along and it makes that nice little angle there so you can see for the back radius like I said I use the 36 inch offset now what I mean by offset is is if you look on most uh, Ben Roy's um, they have a flat spot at the bottom so they don't curve under they can but most of them don't or the ones I do don't okay so in order to get this what I do is I'll take and I'll measure off the bottom this is the bottom so off the bottom you're gonna go up 12 inches and you're gonna go ahead and make your mark which you can see I have then from there you are gonna go the other way and go 36 inches which I have and then 36 inches off the top which also lines up to the 36 inches off the back mark your line and then there's your 36 go ahead and mark there and we're gonna remove this and there you have your accent you're gonna put your screw into on your template board. Now with my first one, I didn't have a template. I just took a screw and screwed it in there and used a piece of wire that was 36 inches for the back and 24 for the front. So now that we have that marked, you're gonna take the nail, stick it right in the center just like that okay now I'm gonna go ahead and screw her home okay as you can see I have it mounted and it's out here and if you look 36 is right on the edge of the plywood where it's supposed to be start a rounding Once you've done that, let me get this out of the way. Now you can see your back radius. A little bit different than the front, so it'll give it a little bit of a different look. From here on out, now I'm going to use my jigsaw. I've already cut the other side, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this side close to the wall, or close to the line, I'm sorry and then I am going to clamp them both together and I'm going to use my router with a trim bit on it to get the exact same radius on both walls. Some people use a belt sander. I just choose to do it with a router because it's near flawless every time. So over here I'm going to show you. I went ahead and took the Liberty. These are the spars. Now what these are, this is just a four by eight. What these are is, uh, what I did was I took you um you had you 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 could you do you you want what I did was I took eight foot two by fours and cut them in half and then I split them right down the middle. So I set the blade at I believe it was an inch and three corner an inch and three quarters to the center of the blade from the fence to the center of the blade and I ripped them down the center. So basically you're going to get four roof spars in a 4x8 out of one 2x4. If you're looking to save a little bit of money, then that's a way to do it. 4x8 is definitely the cheapest to build. Alright, all set up for the back one.
Okay, this is the point where the footage ends. Um, unfortunately, it stopped with me cutting. Little tip for you. Use your cutoffs that came off the plywood after you cut your radiuses to keep your walls square until you can get your spars in place. Here you can see the wall installed. The next video is going to be about the spars and getting them installed. Thanks for hanging out with me and uh, make sure you come back next week. Until then, build on.